So there are three major announcements that happen in Arduino land. In this video, I'm gonna give you the scoop and I'm gonna make a prediction for what I think it means for developers worldwide. So here are the three things. Arduino was acquired by Qualcomm. Arduino launched a new board called the Arduino Q that can act as a standalone computer. And Arduino launched a new IDE to program this Arduino Q. Now, if that's not enough to raise your eyebrows, then you are not the geek who should be watching this video. And you should probably click on that picture of a guy wrestling a porcupine. So let's first talk about this Arduino Q since acquisitions really aren't my strong point. Okay, so this is a pretty cool looking board. It has an Arduino form factor but like I mentioned it can be used as a single board computer and it comes preloaded running Debian Linux so all you have to do is plug in a USB-C dongle and then you add peripherals like a display and a keyboard and a mouse and you can use it just like a computer so how is this possible well the board has a Qualcomm microprocessor on it. It's called the Dragonwing QRB2210, if that means anything to you. Now this whole single board computer thing sounds a lot like a Raspberry Pi, doesn't it? But what keeps this board Arduino-esque is that it also has a microcontroller on the board. It's an STM32U585 ARM Cortex M33. So the idea is that you can have the horsepower of a microprocessor running Linux but you can also have the real-time responsiveness of a microcontroller that us Arduino developers are accustomed to. Now, me, I'm more of a microcontroller kind of guy. I can't say I've ever worked with microprocessors, but I will say that this Dragonwing at least sounds pretty cool. I mean, it has a GPU on it. So apparently, this Arduino Q board is really designed around running Edge AI models. And if you haven't heard of what Edge AI is, it's basically when you run AI models on a device without needing the cloud. And so all that data stays on the board where the computation is being done, which, you know, has some advantages. Now, this Arduino Q board also has Wi-Fi and BLE, a bunch of LEDs, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of flash storage. And that's not like an SD card flash storage, it's like flash storage on the board. It also has a quick connector with it. Now the base model is selling for $44 USD, but there's this upgraded version they're going to release that's gonna have four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of flash storage, and I think it's gonna sell for around $57. So how the heck do you program this thing? Well, that leads to the next big announcement, which is the Arduino App Lab. And this is a new Arduino IDE designed specifically to work with the Arduino Q. That's right, you heard me correctly. This new Arduino IDE is just for the Arduino Q, at least right now. As they release other boards with Qualcomm microprocessors, there'll probably be a bigger ecosystem of boards to choose from. Now, just to make a clarity here, this isn't replacing Arduino IDE 2.0 or the legacy IDE for that matter. Those are gonna be what you'll use for programming you know, the Arduino boards that we grew up on, right? But this new IDE, you can write Arduino sketches right next to Python sketches. And you heard me say Python sketches, not MicroPython or CircuitPython, just straight Python code. The Python sketches are running on the microprocessor and the Arduino sketches are running on the microcontroller. Now the Arduino sketch and the Python code talk to each other through what is called a bridge. And I have to say, this seems to me kind of like the coolest part of this whole shebang bang. Now again, I haven't used this yet. I'm just reading the documentation, but this is how I understand how it works. Basically, it's like there's an API between the microprocessor running Linux and the microcontroller running your Arduino sketch. And kind of here's the basic API structure. They have these things called provides, and that's a service that can be called upon. And then there's a call where you can call upon that service or, you know, that's provided. And then they have a notify where the other side can like send some parameters to say like, hey, we got some data. And what's cool about this is the API can go both ways. So let's say you have some whiz bang Python code that you wanna run but you want it to be triggered by a sensor input. So you wire up your sensor on your Arduino Q like normal, right? And you write an Arduino sketch like normal, except that when in that sketch, 
the sensor is triggered, you just make an API call to a Python function. And you can go the other way too. So maybe you have a display hooked up and a keyboard connected to your Arduino queue. And maybe you wrote some Python app, right? Well, you could interact with your graphical user interface on the display with, you know, like this Python app. But then you could notify your Arduino sketch to do something so that the microcontroller then does something, you know, in the physical world. App Lab also has these things called bricks. Bricks are written in Python code and they're designed to help developers build more complex applications easier and quicker, things like AI vision models, stuff like that, right? Now these bricks run separate processes on the Linux environment. So on that microprocessor, you know, the Qualcomm one, right? And they have this specific API exposed that you can use. And here's the way I'm thinking about them. And again, I could be wrong here because I'm just reading the documentation, but you know how Arduino has a bunch of code libraries and they make using peripherals like way easier, right? Like I can just pull some LCD down and just use the LCD library or I don't know, any number of sensors. I just pull a library and it's like, man, I've got some functions I can use. Well, I think bricks are kind of like these code libraries, but with some additional packaging for them that makes them easy to deploy. And right now there's really only a handful of bricks that are available. So they've got this AI audio brick, an AI computer vision brick, an AI sensor data brick, an API, IoT storage, and a web user interface brick. So I'm not sure if they're gonna be adding more of these bricks or if users like us are gonna be able to contribute bricks, but I don't know, sounds pretty cool to me. And again, I have not been able to use App Lab yet because I do not have an Arduino Q, but as soon as I get one, I'll update you and uh, you know I'll let you know how this goes. So if all this wasn't interesting enough, Arduino got bought by Qualcomm. Coincidentally, just last week, I got to talk with the Arduino CEO, Fabio Violente, during a happy hour at this Imagine conference I was at in the Bay Area. That Imagine conference is all about Edge AI, and it's put on by this company called Edge Impulse, who just so happened to have also been acquired by Qualcomm about a year ago. Now, Fabio was a speaker there, as well as a guy from Qualcomm. His name's Nicole Dougal, and he's like the uh, general manager of like the automotive industrial embedded stuff at Qualcomm. You think I would have put two and two together, but this whole news about the Qualcomm acquisition was a complete surprise to me. What was really kind of fun is that major news outlets were talking about the acquisition and hearing reporters try to pronounce Arduino is pretty entertaining. So why did Qualcomm buy Arduino? Well, let me start by saying this. Arduino is the de facto electronics prototyping platform in the world. It owns electronics prototyping like nobody's business. Just last year, this number is crazy. Just last year, the Arduino IDE was downloaded 37 million times. That doesn't even include the Arduino Cloud IDE. So there is this huge base of developers out there. And what I've come to realize is that this is not just like tinkers using Arduino. There's actually tons of huge companies and small companies that use Arduino in the prototyping stage, which is a really important stage when you're building a product that will eventually come to market. And think about how fast you can go when you want to spin up an idea with Arduino. Companies want that same advantage. Like GE, for example, they've bought thousands of Arduino boards for their engineers. Ferrari and BMW use Arduino boards for prototyping. I have personally met tons of small business owners that use Arduino for prototyping products. So back to this question, why did Qualcomm buy Arduino? Well, I mean, all right, be honest, it beats me, but here's some conjectures I've heard. Okay, so the first thing is, hey, there's a lot of young people out there who've grown up with Arduino. One day, they're gonna be the people responsible for making buying decisions at hardware companies. And if they're familiar with Qualcomm chips via using Arduino, then hey, that gives Qualcomm a one up on the competition. So that's one line of reasoning. Another one is that Qualcomm wants to help developers build with its chips. So essentially, they're really just buying access to this massive Arduino developer ecosystem. So another thing I've heard is that Qualcomm is betting on Edge AI for the future, and it thinks Arduino and Edge Impulse and some of these other companies that they've acquired are gonna allow them to build upon this technology in this industry. But you know, for all I know, maybe the Qualcomm CEO has a man crush on the Arduino founder, Massimo Bonzi. Like maybe that was why, I don't know. But you know, this Arduino 
thing is a two-way street. So why did Arduino decide to get bought by Qualcomm? Again, I mean, it beats me, but here's some things I heard. Okay, so the first thing people throw out is money, right? I'm sure there was a lot of money that exchanged hands, right? So I don't doubt that that was part of the reason. But, you know, another reason might be that Arduino is trying to stay with the times. What they see is that AI applications are quickly taking over the landscape, and this Qualcomm merger is going to give them access to this powerful chipset, plus a ton of engineers that work at Qualcomm who really know how to use those chips and exploit other capabilities. Well, I guess in the end, the reason that the acquisition happened doesn't matter that much. I feel like what really matters is what does this mean for you and me as Arduino developers, right? Well, here's what I hope. You know how Arduino made using microcontrollers way easier than it used to be? Well, what I hope is that this next phase of Arduino makes using microprocessors way easier than it used to be. It seems like that could be a pretty neat future. So here's what I'm worried about. You know, the Arduino software and the hardware is completely open source. And I feel like that's a big contributor to the fact that there is this big ecosystem of different companies and contributors. And, you know, all this stuff is made and it's compatible with this Arduino ego ecosystem. But I'm worried that now that Qualcomm is the mix, if Arduino only uses Qualcomm chips in these future boards, then does that mean we're going to have a smaller pool Namely, can we only buy Arduino boards that are going to work, for example, with this Arduino App Lab? Or will there be other boards that will work with Arduino App Lab that don't have Qualcomm chips? Like, you know, variety is the spice of life. I like having all these options. Will that be the case? I, I don't know. But what I do know is that your Arduino programming skills just got way more valuable. And hey, if you want to learn how to do this stuff, make sure to check out programmingelectronics.com. You can check the link in the description or just hit this QR code. You can get up to speed fast with this programming stuff pretty quick. Now, the next video you want to watch is this one right here. It's going to give you three tips that I wish I would have known when I started programming Arduino well over a decade ago. This video right here is going to give you three really pragmatic, down-to-earth tips to get you going fast with Arduino.